Hello everyone, Nubkex here. Welcome back to Nub Raids. And today I want to talk about Raid Shadow Legends missing content. Something that was promised to us a long time ago, but has yet to show up in the game. Or well, maybe there's a little bit of a hint of it in the game, but the content isn't there yet. I wanted to make this video as well, especially because I did a video last week talking about new content with a new Heroes Path event. Check out that video if you haven't seen about the Heroes Path. I'm hoping we're going to hear more info over the next week or so. I'm expecting it to be live in the game probably within a week, uh, lining up with the Solstice, Summer Solstice, next Tuesday. Um, but anyway, people were saying, that's not new content, it's just like a new raid style event on top of the stuff we're already doing what about new content though and something that would really change up the game a lot of you may not have seen this before you might not have seen this before but we're going to jump over here what video are we watching we're actually watching the official raid shadow legends what's next in raid video episode two Okay, episode two, and this is pretty old, which is why I think a lot of people might not know about it. This actually came out over a year ago on the 11th of March, 2021. And just to reiterate, guys, by the way, this is pure speculation on my part. And certainly we're going to see, I'm going to play a little 20 second clip here, which is pretty crazy. Certainly some of this stuff may have changed, but I think pure speculation, uh, that I, I think we could definitely see this coming to the game. Let's play the clip, let's go. It's always one of our priorities. Here it goes. We also want to expand upon Champion Ascension. We don't Champion want to just Ascension. add more levels of Ascension with the same old resources here. We want to make it a fun challenge and give you a real reason to do it beyond a simple stats boost. We're not ready to show our hand here just yet, but we'll turn one card over. Here's a couple of teasers connected to the feature that tickle your imagination. Nothing like this Any in guesses game. guesses what this tower thing will become when we do the big reveal? Leave them in the comments below. Okay, and that's the clip. Super cool, right? Seven minutes 30 into the video if you want to go watch it yourself, right? But pretty crazy. A really cool looking boss. Looks like he would flip around two different forms. Awesome. Nothing like that in the game yet. One, one Okay, and basically they're talking here about, right? Champion Ascension, but a different kind of Ascension. Upgrading your champions, but not simply being a stat boost. Um, but something that's a fun challenge and that really changes up how your champions might actually function. Pretty crazy. And by the way, look at this. You see this in the in the video right here, in-game, purple on the tower. Whereas if we jump into the live game right now, we've got red on top of the tower. Yeah, so there's they're clear this was updated relatively recently. They changed the color of the tower. Um, and I think that's definitely hinting towards us that this feature might be coming back into it. Might be coming back into it. It's certainly, when you consider the position here, right? This left-hand side of the dungeon screen, it's all about these potions, which is Champion Ascension. Minotaur, the next closest thing, is about masteries, upgrading your champion. Putting a tower over here on this side of the screen, definitely this says to me that this is to do with this possible thing coming up. So what do I think it is? What could it be? My theory, my theory is that what we might have coming up is Mythic Ascension. That is my guess. Coming from the fact that, look, they turned the tower red. What do we have in-game that is red? Well, certainly with our champions, you know, Legendary is orange. But if we jump into this new stuff that was added, and they changed the color after Hydra was out, right? We now have uh, Mythic Gear, right? Red Gear, Mythical Gear, a new gear level above legendary better than legendary so this is my theory that what they might do is add in mythic ascension and there's definitely a lot of different ways they could do this my theory and let me show you the example i've come up with i think it'll be simply that you'll get materials and you'll be able to in in this area that the sky tower as it's called in the dungeon section you'll go into or sky peak excuse me you'll go into sky peak you'll get materials and i think a straightforward way is that you just upgrade the stars all over again, six different levels of mythic ascension, where basically these stars turn from purple to red, right? They go, they go red and you get some cool stuff. Let me show you an example. So going off what they were saying in that video that they don't want it to be simple stat boosts. They want it to be more than that. I came up with an example for Arbiter here in Photoshop. So let me show you what I threw in going through six different levels. And what I've done, I've been very much inspired. Let me jump over here. Very much inspired by, in this case, the XCOM um, XCOM 2s. I think this XCOM 2, maybe it's XCOM 1. I can't remember now. But their talent 
uh, system, where basically every time you ranked up in that game on your character, you could choose between one of two perks. And as you can see here, you can mix and match, but each side of this tree basically builds into a style of play. So for example, in this game, this is your sharpshooter. Um, they have sniper rifles and they've got pistols. So the left side of the tree focused on sniping and long distance combat. And then the right hand side focused on the pistols and quicker shots shooting multiple enemies for much less damage, right? So two, two aspects of this. So I've done the same thing here with Arbiter as an example of what we might see. Here we go, let's go into it. So I think I gave them what I've done, seeing as there are six levels, I didn't want to alter their abilities at every level, right? So I gave a little stat boost at the start. So for example, at level one, choose between plus 10 speed for Arbiter herself or make her speed aura a 35% speed aura, right? So 5% more speed for your entire team or 10 speed more for Arbiter. So it's a bit of a toss up there. What sort of team are you building? Which one is gonna be more effective for you? Not the most exciting, but both sides capitalizing on the fact that Arbiter is really this very speed focused champion. And this one is more, maybe more aggressive, more focused on her and this side, more focused on her team. Let's go down further. So I said on level two, this is where things start to get a bit more spicy. We're gonna upgrade her A3, right? Her heal, her turn meter boost with the increased attack. So on the left hand side, we're really focused on that speed and aggression. Give it another 5% turn meter fill, right? So for Arbiter, instead of, um, instead of giving you uh, a 30% turn meter boost, give it a 35%, maybe even a 40% turn meter boost, upping that turn meter boosting potential. Or alternatively, more team focused here, the heal could work on allies up to 75% health. As it is right now, she heals allies by 25% of their HP if they've less than 50% HP. Increase that up to 75%. So making her a much more consistent healer, very effective for things like PVE content like Hydra. We go down into our next level here, either giving her 50 accuracy, upping her offensive value, her debuffs, her buff stripping with her A2, or giving her 50 resistance, making her more resistant to debuffs, having her stay alive, heal your team, revive your team, support your team more. Next level, level four. I'm thinking, let's upgrade her A2. Not the most exciting part of her kit. Let's give it a bit more punch. So either, let me zoom in some more actually. Sorry for mobile users, I didn't think of that. And let me make this uh, full screen as well. There we go. I'm a I'm good YouTuber sometimes. Uh, let's upgrade her A2. So either on the left-hand side, her A2 will do a big chunk of bonus damage, an extra damaging effect, and that damage would increase for every buff that she reduces, right? So on her A2 and Forest Humility, it's an AoE attack that can decrease the duration of all enemy buffs. Let's say it just does a baseline extra chunk of damage based on her attack, and that scales up and up and up based on the more, the more buffs you remove, or then a more team-focused option, make it give a shield to your allies. And then that shield, the, the size of the shield would increase for every buff that she reduces. So the more buffs that you strip off with her, the bigger the shield you give to your team. Both very useful options, right? At building in a different style of Arbiter. Then we've got another stat level here, and this is where it starts to get spicier, right? We're talking about fifth level ascension. So at this point, we want this to be more impactful. So either giving her 50% base attack or 20% base HP. So the base HP, pretty straightforward, right? Have her stay alive for longer. Um, and just be better at supporting your team or increasing her base attack would increase her from 1,000 base attack to one and a half thousand base attack. In which case, you know, upping her damage becomes much more reasonable. Uh, her damage multipliers aren't super high, which is why I settle for a high enough number here with a base attack increase. Maybe you could go even harder, but essentially make it so that you're going, okay, now, all right, now actually building Arbiter with some damage as well as some speed could actually be pretty good. Like her A2 could smack really hard, right? Especially with that bonus accuracy, that bonus base attack. She could be a solid damage dealer here for us at the same time, or just focusing on her reviving. Then finally, for the final level, I said, let's go kind of a little bit spicy here uh, and increase her revive, make her revive move better. So let's go with the, the revive, the support focus side first. Revive allies now up to 70% HP. So as it is in game right now, her revive revives people at 35% HP. They're pretty low. How about it revives them at 70%, which is pretty scary. That's a really powerful revive, especially if you combo it with the fact that you could now heal them with her A3 up to 75% health. So you revive them at 70% HP, give them a 25% HP heal. That works now with this uh, other mythic ascension talent point as it is. 
And uh, it's a pretty powerful combo. She becomes a very scary reviver on top of the bonus resistance HP. This side of the tree makes Arbiter a really powerful reviver. Now this other side, we probably need to add in a new buff, like an empowered buff or something like that. Uh, I don't know, focus, uh, some sort of name, a vicious buff, something like that. But make her revive, increase the damage each ally deals by 20% on their next attack, or maybe on their next turn, something like that. So you turn her revive move from being simply a revive with a bit of turn meter boost, right? When you use it for a non-revive purpose, not that exciting. It's 20% turn meter, okay? But now it would give you 20% more damage on your next attack. Maybe 25%, like a new a new buff type. That's a vicious buff. 25% more damage on your next attack. Uh, and that becomes, again, kind of interesting. It becomes a useful move. Let's say in even in PvE content like Hydra, you could use that to just like pump up your damage. Just hit harder. Pretty cool. By just upping damage in general, it would make her more functional with defensive and HP-based nukers. So, for example, you could put her in with, let's say, Magnar, right? We all love Magnar. <laughs> Everyone loves Magnar. Where is he? He's coming in. That HP-based nuker with Percussive Pound. With this Arbiter, you could come in and go, okay, she's going to open with her A3 and, or A4 instead now, right? Increase his damage. Just flat. Flat damage increase because he doesn't benefit from increased attack. And boom, I built like this whole other style of team around my Arbiter. So these would be... That's like sort of an overview of, of my ideas. Quick ideas. I just tossed these together this morning. But the idea is that at each, you could choose basically however you want. So we could come in and let's take red. I could go, okay, well, I want the 10 speed. Okay. I'll actually take the heal though. I think that's more useful. I will, you know, I'm going to go with the accuracy, but I am going to take the shielding. But I do want the accuracy to synergize with the shielding. I'll just take the base HP. And then you know what? I'm going to go with Destiny's Call. And I'm pretty happy. I feel like this is a great Arbiter I've put together here. This is an Arbiter that's going to be like really good uh, in multiple sorts of content. And you're sort of choosing back and forth. This is my idea. Uh, what do you guys think? Do you think this is cool? I'll say the pros of this is kind of exciting. Um, there's a lot of interesting stuff going on. I think having two choices at each level uh, it is nice. It, it, that feeling of choice is kind of fun. Potentially, you could get rid of this and just have, you know, a stat boost and then a, a, an ability change. Just choose the most popular one and just have it be a linear path with no choice. That's a possible option as well that keeps it simpler. Uh, because the big downside of this is this is a very much a custom built talent chart for Arbiter. And you would have to do this with every legendary champion, perhaps expand it to every epic champion as well. That's a ton of work. That's a ton of stuff to balance. But it could be a really cool, a really, really cool new feature. And how I would like to see this implemented in the game with this Sky, uh, Sky Peak dungeon, if they did it, I think it'd be kind of fun. Uh, just to mention this in general, uh, it'd be kind of fun if this was kind of like a an endless dungeon type mode. It's like, let's say you have one attempt every three days. Every three days you have one attempt. You can go into the Sky Peak Tower and... You have to climb as far up the tower as you can. And every floor you go up, uh, there's increasing difficulty. Maybe you can get some nice bonuses and stuff on the way, like a roguelite type game, yeah? Uh, and the further you go up, the more rewards you get. So you would get some sort of mythic essence that you could use to ascend your champions, mythic ascension for your champions, earn that essence. Uh, perhaps it would be another really good way, another nice reward to put in there would be finally to put in pages for skill tomes, right? So earn pages for skill tomes and build skill tomes to actually upgrade your champions more. Uh, just dropping in some random drops as well, like random ascension potions, all the rest could be kind of nice. Be a really cool thing to add in some challenges as well, like complete it with all champions from the high elves and get like bonus mythic dust to mythically ascend high elf champions in particular. There's a lot of cool stuff you could do with it, little modifiers and things like that. Um, and just like this repeatable content, every three days, go in, it's like your sort of loot pinata thing, push as far as you can, right? Push as far as you can, get as much loot as you can. Um, and uh, yeah, then slowly over time, upgrade your champions. Cause this would be something that I think would take quite a bit of work. It would take quite a bit of time, you know, leveling them up it would get more expensive each level it'd be a pretty big deal um yeah you know a bit of a time sink that's just the way the game's designed right a bit of a time sink kind of cool uh, eventually you could also start dropping I, I do think they might up the dungeons level 30 at some point and let you drop maybe mythical versions of those artifacts you could get maybe ra rare mythic drops mythical item drops in the tower that could be fun 
you know, a limited, but kind of a fun little bonus or perhaps like mythical ore that you could forge up that stuff. I think they could add item ascension and stuff in the future as well, anything like that. But guys, that is what I wanted to talk about in today's video. Basically revisiting, not XCOM 2, though that is something I, I want to do myself at some point as well, but revisiting this idea that they talked about over a year ago that they could add more Ascension. I think certainly with the Hydra and Mythical stuff coming in with Red and this, this tower being Red, I think Mythical Ascension not only makes sense, but seems pretty cool. I mean, maybe when you fully ascend a champion, it, it could even change their tag from Legendary to Mythical when they are fully ascended. Bam, upgrade them to Mythical. That could be pretty cool. Um, but yeah, let me know what you think. Would you be into this? Like, d does this idea of this tree seem cool? Would you like choices? Uh, do you want it individually tailored to each champion? Is this something that would excite you? And would you enjoy grinding it out and all the rest? I'm excited to hear your thoughts. As always, thank you for watching. This was, of course, pure speculation, in case I didn't make that obvious, but it is. Um, and yeah, I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.